In this lesson we're going to talk about subtracting fractions. Now, I didn't bother putting any specific step-by-step -step instructions at the top because um, really you follow the same exact steps you would for addition, but you subtract instead. So if the denominators are already the same, um, then all I need to do is subtract the tops and put that over the same denominator. The only thing we need to worry about is if we need to reduce at the end. So you can see in 7 twelfths minus 1 twelfth, uh, 7 minus 1 is 6. Put that over 12. But of course you recognize that uh, 6 and 12 have a greatest common factor of 6. We can divide both the top and the bottom by 6. So our answer here is 1 half. Now in this next example, um, we have to remember our rules of subtracting um, of subtracting sign numbers. So remember when you see minus a negative, right, the thing you should be thinking to yourself is I need to cross the line, change the sign. So we actually end up adding here, and we have four sevenths plus two sevenths to get an answer of six sevenths. So don't forget about those subtracting um, sign number rules. Uh, now we also have a couple of mixed number situations here. So um, just like when we added, all we have to do is, um, you know, all we had to do is add the whole number parts, add the fraction parts. Same thing here with subtraction. If you already have the same denominator in the fraction parts, um, you can just go ahead and say, all right, 9 minus 5 is 4. 2 thirds minus 1 third is 1 third. Simple as that. Now the last example is a little more tricky, though. Notice that you have a whole part here but no fraction part um, to take 2 fifths away from. So, um, so that's a little funny um, because we're trying to take away 2 fifths from nothing. And while we do understand how to, you know, work with subtracting numbers, you know, you might think, well, maybe I could take, uh, you know, zero plus negative two-fifths. We really don't want to get into that with mixed numbers. That really just kind of muddies the waters. So rather, let's do this. Could we all agree that five-fifths is the same as one whole? We understand that a number over itself is just one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow one from the seven. So borrowing one from the seven leaves me with six in the whole part. And then I'm going to take that one that I borrowed from seven and turn it into five fifths. So think of this kind of like, um, you know, when you're a kid and you you know, you would go to the arcade and you wanted quarters and um, maybe you took up some dollar bills and exchanged them for quarters that you could put in the machines. So it's just like that. We're just taking one of those holes and exchanging it for a fraction. But it's a fraction that's equal to one hole. So 7 becomes 6 and 5 fifths. Now what we can do is take 6 minus 4, which is 2, and then 5 fifths minus 2 fifths is 3 fifths.